Hi guys, in today's episode, I'll walk you through the assets of this game in detail and explain the concept of sprite sheets. I'll then create a sprite sheet with the assets we have. I have also attached the individual asset files with this tutorial. You might want to use them while experimenting and creating the sprite sheets. Finally, I load the animation sprites of the hero from the sprite sheet and render it in the in-game class. Let's look at the animation and the artwork first. As I said, the graphic assets were created in Adobe Illustrator. Let me hide all the layers and just look at the background assets as an example. These background assets are separate layers and were created in such a way that they are repeatable seamlessly in the horizontal direction. In the actual game, our hero doesn't move horizontally at all. Only the background moves horizontally but in the opposite direction giving the players the illusion of forward movement of the hero. The way they were made repeatable was that the graphics started on the left side and ended on the right side at the same vertical pixel. If you draw a horizontal guideline, you will see that the start pixel at the left border of the canvas matches the end pixel at the right border of the canvas. So this way, when I duplicate this element and place it side by side, the ends are seamlessly connected. Same thing is done for the buildings and the trees. I then export these as individual PNG files into organized subfolders. Since I have already done that, I am just going to show you the PNG files. So we have the background folder here that contains the elements of the background. We have the items folder containing all our items. We have the obstacles folder containing the obstacles and the artwork for the crashed obstacles. What I also did for the animated objects was to bring each and every part of the object to Flash Pro and animate the parts. This is Hero's Fly animation. As you can see, it's a bit of work. It has a lot of layers, each body part separated and animated as required. There are about 20 frames for smooth animation. Let me just scrub through the timeline to show you how it is animated. Hiding all the layers and just unhiding one of them, say right foot, shows you how that particular part is animated. And collectively, this is how the animation looks when I run it. I then export the animation or the flash movie into PNG files from file, export, export movie. I choose the PNG sequence in the format drop down menu and give the file name a prefix fly underscore. Now I did the same thing with the helicopter animation which is a two frame animation and also with the lookout sign animation. Okay, let us now explore the concept of sprite sheets. Now for any textures you use in the game, it is recommended to have your texture dimensions be a power of 2. That is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024 or 2048. The width need not match the height as in it need not be a square but they need to be one of these values. If in case your texture dimension is lesser or not one of these values, Starling framework creates a texture with the nearest power of 2 dimension obviously higher than your texture size hence occupying more memory for the unnecessary texture area that got created. One of the recommended ways to minimize this wastage is using sprite sheets. You can think of a sprite sheet basically as an image with many sprites in it. Each piece of artwork or image you use in the game is a sprite, not the technical action script sprite but a term used to describe an image in general. A huge image with collection of this kind of sprites is called a sprite sheet. It is also called as a texture atlas. Additionally. A texture atlas contains another file describing what portion of the image contains what sprite or image data. One important thing to keep in mind is that a sprite sheet's maximum width and height is restricted to 2048 by 2048 pixels. Let me show you a sample sprite sheet and its data file. This PNG file is a sprite sheet image and this XML file is a sprite sheet data. I know creating this XML file manually sounds scary, so I recommend the use of a very capable cross-platform tool called Texture Packer. 
you can get it from texturepacker.com. The basic and essential version of this software is free, but you might have to buy it to get the most out of it. Before we begin creating a sprite sheet or texture atlas, let us keep the sprites ready. And I have texture packer installed on my machine. So let me open it. So we have three important aspects of this tool. One is the settings of your texture atlas. The second is the sprites that you include in it. And the third is the preview of the final texture atlas it creates. You can start by dragging the PNG files we created onto the sprites area and you should see the preview showing the sprite sheet. Let's look at the settings before we generate the final texture atlas. The output data format should be Sparrow. This works fine for the Starling based projects. Let me set the name of the data file. I'll save it on desktop. My sprite sheet dot XML. You can observe that the texture file also got updated with the same name. Let's check the auto size checkbox and let the maximum width and height be 2048. Texture Packer will automatically create a sprite sheet with the width or height of the power of 2 as I mentioned earlier and still keep it under 2048. So to ensure this happens, don't check the allow free sizes checkbox here. I'll also select the basic algorithm. I think this is enough for our use case. There are some padding properties you can set here. But before you do that, I recommend you turn on an option below that says shape outlines. This makes it clearer to understand the padding properties. Border padding is the padding of the sprites to the edges of the sprite sheet itself. Shape padding is the padding between each sprite. Inner padding is the padding inside a sprite to its edges. Now there are two options here which I want you to observe. Crop and Trim. Crop cuts out waste transparent pixels around the image if you have left them in the PNG files and reduces the size of the image to contain only pixels with data. You would use this to reduce the sprite sheet's dimension, hence reducing the file size and memory. Trim does almost the same thing, but it also stores the information of the ignored transparent pixels in the data file. So the game can actually show those transparent pixels during the time of render. This option helps reduce the dimensions of the sprite sheet but since it keeps the data, in the final output, we get the exact same result we require without sacrificing any transparent pixels around. These are some of the basic options you need to keep in mind and then you can go ahead and click publish. This creates the PNG and the XML files for our texture atlas. Let me open the actual sprite sheet texture packer file I created for Hungry Hero. And as you can see, I have dragged and dropped the folders instead of individual files. This helps a lot. Whenever I add more PNG files or frames to an animation, I don't need to drag the additional frames or files into Texture Packer. Since I'm pointing a folder, it automatically adds the new files in the folder. So I have all the sprites used in this game. The ones we need for this episode are all the fly sprites for the hero. All right, we are done with the sprite sheet and let's look at how to use them in Starling. Let's begin by creating a new function in the assets class. Public static function get atlas. This function doesn't accept any parameters but returns a texture atlas object. So the job of this function is to create a new texture atlas object from the PNG and the XML sprite sheet files and return it back to the class that requested it. Again, as we did before, we won't create the texture atlas every time we request a sprite. We'll only create it the first time. So let me define a private static variable. Call it game texture atlas. That'll be of type texture atlas. Let me also embed the PNG and the XML asset files for the texture atlas. Embed source is equal to dot dot slash media slash graphics slash my sprite sheet dot png I'll store that as public static constant atlas texture game this will be of type class 
embed source is equal to dot dot slash media slash graphics slash my sprite sheet dot xml we'll need to define the mime type for this so mime type is equal to application slash octet stream i'll store that as public static constant atlas xml game this will also be of type class now in the get atlas method i'll make a similar check as i did before if game texture atlas is equal to null then create a new texture where texture of type texture and call the get texture method and pass the class name as a string atlas texture game similarly create a new variable xml of type xml and that will be type casted to xml new atlas xml game finally let's initialize the game texture atlas variable as new texture atlas and pass the sprite sheet png and the sprite sheet xml now outside the if condition i'll return the new texture atlas object we are done with this class let's continue by creating a new action script class in game and extend it from starling sprite and i'll put it in the package screens so we'll finally create the hero and animate him based on the fly animation sprites so for that i'll need to create another class hero extend it from starling sprite place it in the objects package and here let me listen to the added to stage event so this dot add event listener starling dot events dot event dot added to stage on added to stage we'll create the method this dot remove event listener of event dot added to stage on added to stage i'll call a method here called create hero art i'll create that new method since hero is not an image but an animation instead of the image class we'll use the starling dot display dot movie clip class so let me create a private variable hero art of type movie clip and inside the create hero art method hero art is equal to new movie clip now as you see starling movie clip is very different from the usual movie clip you create in flash pro it needs a vector object that contains the set of textures and also the frame rate that this movie clip needs to run at since we created the sprite sheet with all the textures of hero let us access it by saying assets dot get atlas this either creates the atlas if it is the first time or returns the existing atlas a texture atlas object has a method get textures and that accepts a string as a parameter now when you pass a string to this it searches for the sprite that has a name prefixed with the string we need all the sprites for hero's fly animation let's look at the individual files we created the file names here become the prefix strings we need to pass to the sprite sheets so we need to pass fly underscore as the prefix let's set the frame rate to 20 this just suits fine for his normal flight speed let us also align the hero art's center to the 0 0 of this class so hero art dot x is equal to math dot seal minus hero art dot width by 
Similarly, hero art dot y is equal to math dot seal minus hero art dot height by two. The reason I gave a math dot seal is because we want the hero to always render at a whole pixel and not in between pixels. Rendering in between pixels results in blurry edges of images. Now let's add hero art to the display list. So this dot add child hero art. Now this won't animate the hero yet. A simple little thing you need to do in Starling to animate an object like this is to add it to something called as a juggler. Juggler in Starling is a simple object that makes sure the objects that should be animated are animated. In this case, since hero art is a movie clip and a movie clip is animatable, juggler advances the frames of the object hero art once per frame execution. So, starling dot core dot starling dot juggler dot add and pass hero art. Now let's go back to the in-game class and create a new object. Private where hero type hero and instantiate it in the on added to stage method. So in the constructor this dot add event listener of starling dot events dot event dot added to stage on added to stage. In this method, this dot remove event listener event dot added to stage on added to stage. Let me call a draw game method inside this and define it. Now inside the draw game method, hero is equal to new hero and this dot add child of hero. Let me place the hero in the center of the screen. So hero dot x is equal to stage dot stage width by two and hero dot y is equal to stage dot stage height by two. We are done. Now just before running this, for the sake of testing, let me go back to the main class which is hungryhero.as. Instead of game as the initial starling sprite class, let me pass in game. When we run this, we should see the hero animating in place with all the frames I created in Flash Pro. This looks good and we are done for now. And in the next episode, we'll write more code to create the backgrounds and move the objects. Now, if you also observe, we have embedded each and every PNG file necessary for the welcome screen separately. Now, since you know the concept of sprite sheets and how to extract assets from the sprite sheet, I encourage you guys to try and experiment and load all these assets of the welcome screen from the sprite sheet instead of individual PNG files. If you are not able to accomplish that, not to worry, I am going to cover that in the next episode. Please do send me your feedback and suggestions and also subscribe to my tutorials. And see you very very soon in the next episode of Starting with Starling.